The syringe was invented in the mid-19th century, but it wasn't until the 1950s that mass-produced disposable syringes came on the market, developed for the vast immunisation campaign against polio. Whether it's drawing blood or injecting medicine, this is one invention which has an important point to it. A syringe may make you cringe, but the treatment it delivers could be a lifesaver. To make a hypodermic needle, they start with a flat strip of stainless steel. A milling machine rolls it into a tube shape. A laser welds the seam together. But what makes the steel stiff enough to use is something called cold work, in which they press the tubing through a die several times. This also slims the tube dramatically, so now you have a thinner, tougher tube. It takes a couple of days to turn the stainless steel strip into a tube with needle potential, but it will have to be sharp to perform, and the next steps will focus on getting the steel tube to a point where it's more than just a blunt object. An electrically powered blade scores the walls of the tubes as rubber pads bear down and roll. This rolling causes the tubes to finally break at the score line. The tubes are being cut down to size, about five centimeters long. The tubes fall into a bin, a tangled mess. The bin, driven by air pressure, agitates, and this shaking motion straightens them out. An operator bundles them together with elastic bands, but removes a few for checking. This micrometer uses laser light to measure the outside diameter. The tube is supposed to be two millimeters thick, and it's spot on. Next, a mechanically driven drum rolls super adhesive tape onto the tubes. The tape will hold the tubes in place as more work is done on them. They cut 12 centimeter strips of the tape tubes, so that there are about 100 tubes per strip. Then, they spray aluminium oxide on the ends of the tubes. This roughens them, so that the surface will be easier to work with. Now they place the strips of tubes into the grinding fixture, and then they snap it shut. Coolant flushes over the tube tips as the fixture moves across a grinding wheel. The wheel grinds through the tops of the tubes, shaping them into a rough point. This is only the first grind, so it's not yet needle sharp. Now, the fixture rolls and rotates the tubes. Then, it's back to the grind. The angle of the wheel is changed so that it sands the sides of the tubes. These two secondary grinds sharpen the tubes to a finer point. This is how they looked before grinding, and this is after, with their sharp needle tips. Now it's time for the big inspection. The ends of the needles are pushed back to make sure they're even. And then a needle is pulled out for sampling. The length of the grind is measured. It should be a few millimeters long. The needle's diameter is checked with a micrometer. Holding the needle between posts, it measures the space between them. Then, the inside diameter is checked by inserting a plug gauge into the tube. Now, a bundle is inspected for irregularities or burrs. Using tweezers, one is removed for a close-up look under the microscope. Once they pass inspection, it's onto the automated assembly machine. Brass and nickel-plated fittings called hubs drop into pins on the wheel. Then needles fall onto the hubs. Metal fingers align them so they fit together precisely. The hub is the piece that will connect the needle to the syringe. Automated crimpers press the needle into the hub. Friction bonds them. Now two metal pads on the same wheel position the needle. A plastic sleeve drops down, encasing the point. The needles are now ready for you. But are you ready for them?